Hello, it's Don Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we're going to take a journey through the Senses of the Soul Oracle deck by registered herbalist Samantha Orthlieb. The Senses of the Soul Oracle has been created to support you to access your inner guidance in these chaotic times. These 84 cards carry the psycho-spiritual medicine offered by our sacred plant allies and the wise counsel of the archetypal energies situated within each of our chakras to illuminate our journey. The 227-page full-color guidebook is arranged according to chakra, with each chakra section containing the various botanicals related to that particular chakra, as well as the two dominant archetypes for that chakra. So we'll begin our journey with Samantha's beautiful deck and book by checking out the cards. It comes in this lovely two-piece box. It is a chunky deck because we have over 80 cards in this oracle, and I love an oracle, a big chunky oracle with lots of cards. There is, as I mentioned, a definite structure to this deck, which is fantastic. Um, that's another thing that I definitely really enjoy. And we'll take a look at the guidebook here in a moment. But inside, we have the cards sitting inside the box. Now, everything did come shrink-wrapped, and I have already opened it just so that we don't need to um, go through that process here on this video. The card backs are beautiful. I love the flower pattern with the watercolor background. We see it matches the front of the guidebook. And of course, those same watercolor elements are on the box as well. So lovely production value in this independent deck. I'm going to set the book aside for the moment so that we can focus in on these beautiful cards. So we begin here with chakra one with the earth mother. She's the archetype of the first chakra and represents connection, security, and safety. Next we have blue lupin for clarity, focus, and balance. We have dandelion for grounding, purpose, life force, and safety. We have Orchid for connection, communication, Earth Mother, and nature beings. Palantheus for self-worth, deservingness, and self-love. And you will see that each of these cards also has a um, oracle message or a statement on it. This one is, I am worthy and deserving of good things. We see that on all of the cards. So we have our second archetype. The shaman is aligned with the first chakra and is sometimes referred to as the medicine man or woman. This archetype represents the integration of all parts of the self and the earth to support a return to wholeness. Again, still in chakra one. I have no idea how to pronounce that one. It is facing fears, healing, psychic and intuitive ability. Burdock for detoxification, release, freedom, self-sabotage. We have moss for hope, safety, regeneration, and self-healing. We have plantain for courage, determination, and resilience. Now we're moving into chakra two. The sovereign is the primary archetype of the second chakra, which is linked to creation and abundance in all of its manifestations, both positive and negative. The second chakra is the gateway to the soul in that it facilitates the direct expression of the soul. Next, we have calendula with boundaries, co-creation, consciousness, receptivity, and abundance. Fuchsia with awareness, healing, stillness, and letting go. Next, we have sagebrush with rebirth, transformation, and purification. The evolving archetype of the second chakra is the mystic. A mystic is one who honors the teaching of the ancients and knows of reality beyond what can be intellectually understood. The mystic represents the oneness and connectedness of all things and is a sacred acknowledgement of one's relationship to the cosmos and the earth. And still in our second chakra, here we have black spruce for shadow, integration, wounded masculine, and non-duality. Next, we have echinacea for inner calm, refuge, reclamation of self, spiritual and earthy balance. The oleander for renewed faith, spiritual connection, and divine support. Next, we have valerian with soulful purpose, intuition, presence, and integration of the past. The warrior archetype represents a balanced third chakra, which provides one with a sense of personal empowerment through quiet strength and inner will. So our first chakra ally is marshmallow, 
with freedom from addiction, healthy boundaries, flexibility, willpower, and authentic power. We have peppermint with present moment, personal choice, balanced eating, and emotional release. We have scotch broom with motivation, perseverance, strength to face the unknown. Next, we have our sunflower with personal power, divine masculine, self-confidence, and leadership. The spiritual warrior represents integrity in all of its forms and the choice one has to do right and do better at every turn. So moving along in our third chakra, we have Barberry with spiritual assimilation, decluttering, and inspired service. Next, we have Ginger with clarity, harmony, and discernment. Goldenrod with individuation, autonomy, and healthy boundaries. Next, we have Monkshood with spiritual leadership, clairvoyance, wounded masculine, and Christ consciousness. Here we have our Mountain Pride with courage, right action, and spiritual warrior. Finally, we have our tomato for courage, encouragement, resilience, protection, and stability. The fourth chakra is the home of love and compassion for ourselves and others. The lover embodies that truth, that love is all there is, and that hate is simply the absence of love. The lover archetype loves without limitation or condition and honors that love with clear and defined boundaries. So our first ally in the fourth chakra is Borage for forgiveness, emotional healing, heart-centered enlightenment, and courage. Next, we have Fireweed for abundant love, boundaries, and self-love. Here we have our Hawthorn with following one's heart, unconditional love, empathy, kindness, and new consciousness. Next, we have Sala with forgiveness, heart-centered living, consolation of past and present. The magical child represents the ability to keep our hearts open despite the darkness we may encounter. The magical child takes the unconditional love of the lover and combines it with the courage and pure heart when faced with difficult circumstances. So our first ally in chakra four is buttercup with emotional healing, childlike wonder, and hope. Next, we have elderberry with hope, courage, and inner light. Here we have honeysuckle with rumination, pleasure, embracing change, and apprehension about the future. Our 33rd card is rosehip for gratitude, inner child, childlike wonder, and new beginnings. Here we have zina with joy, laughter, and lightheartedness. Moving into our fifth chakra with the prophet, our power to express our creativity, co-create our own life experience, and bridge our inner and outer lives comes from the energy in the fifth chakra. The prophet helps one to manifest the needs of the soul through right speech and right action. So our first ally in chakra five is the blue bell with honest communication, integrity, openness, and speaking one's truth. Next, we have red clover with creative expression, self-expression, being heard, and effective communication. The muse represents the activation of expression through the fusion of creativity, soulfulness, and spirituality. So our first ally in the fifth chakra is hops for wild feminine, emotional expression, and grounding. Next, we have the iris for beauty, grace, creativity, and releasing blockages. Here we have malign with alignment, discernment, security, purpose, and protection. Next, we have our passion flower with inspiration, purpose, and integration. The sage symbolizes a balance of head and heart, the intellect and intuition respectively, in the sixth chakra, and teaches us that our journey is to rise above our internal agony so that we can sing our unique song for all to hear. So our first ally in chakra six is the fairy bell with inner guidance, true self, confidence, and balanced intellects. Next, we have the oxide daisy with balanced perspective, divine inspiration and guidance, visionary thought and action. Next, we have vibram with clarity, insight, intuition, true self, and confidence. Here we have yarrow for intuition and clairvoyance, discernment, clearing, and protection from psychic attack. The alchemist orchestrates a process whereby the co-creative masculine and feminine unite to rise above fear and transform wisdom and learning into gold. So our next ally in chakra six is Chaga for accurate perception, spiritual connection, deconstruction of beliefs. 
Next, we have Rishi with clarity, stillness of thought, inner knowing, bridging head and heart, and circle of life. Here we have San Pedro Cactus, clarity, discernment, light, and spiritual guidance. Next, we have our Wormwood with purification, releasing of patterns, bilateral harmonization, and clarity. The Guru archetype of the seventh chakra embodies the inner guidance and fortitude required to be comfortable with ambiguity so one can be open to all possibilities and outcomes. So our first ally in chakra seven is Lavender with higher guidance, oneness, tranquility, and surrender. Next, we have our Orchid with Universal Conduit, Ancient Wisdom, Soul Purpose, and Identity. So here we have another Orchid with Realignment, Flow, Grounded, Universal Connection. The evolving archetype for the seventh chakra is the Priest Priestess. This archetype awakens one's desire for wisdom, knowledge, and the unknown, from the practical to the most esoteric and mystical. Here we have Cilantro for Grief, Divine Will, Hope, surrender, and mental flexibility. Next, we have our lotus for balance, humility, integrated spirituality, and service. Next, we have our pink mandevilla with healing addictions, subconscious clarity, and balancing heart and head. Next, we have our spotted coral root for energetic integration, higher consciousness, spiritual shift and epiphanies, and grounded spirituality. We have our yellow dock for detoxification, assimilation, purging, and releasing the past. The enchanter enchantress are archetypes of the rainbow chakra. They serve as guardians of the multidimensional reality and the shepherds of universal truth. Our first ally in chakra eight is the dwarf Korean lilac for trust, surrender, expansive thought, divine order, and synchronicity. Here we have our mugwort with spiritual integration, psychic awareness, and multidimensional consciousness. We have sweet gale for subconscious clearing, lucid dreaming, and clear communication. Here we have our woody nightshade for shadow integration, deep healing, self-love, and compassion. The sorcerer sorceress is an archetype of the 11th chakra. It represents the embodiment of divine form and purpose. Our ally in the chakra 11 is fennel with spiritual acceleration, clarity, and cosmic conduit. Next, we have ginger for divine purpose, decision-making, and ascended consciousness. Here we have mugwort for spiritual ascendancy, higher order, multidimensional consciousness. We see yarrow again here in the 11th chakra with intuitive insight, divine connection, and non-attachment. So for chakra nine, we have our blue star for divine karmic freedom. Connection to the ninth chakra where the blue star supports integration of the earthly self with our divine self and assists in the manifestation of desires and abundance. Next, we have chakra 10 with the gold star for soul expansion. The gold star reminds you that you are being supported to dissolve all energy blockages so that you can access the free flow of energy between all bodies and experience soul level clarity in your healing. Chakra 11 is the silver star for cosmic truth. The silver star integrates the energetic pathways for chakras 8 through 12, increasing the capacity for one to download spiritual and cosmic wisdom, particularly through dreams and imagination. And finally, we have our chakra 12 for the white star with ascension. White star's energy is working with you to increase your spiritual sensitivity so that you can attune to spirit, angelic presences around you, and your guidance from helping spirits and ascended masters. The background colors do relate to the chakra, so that makes it really easy to see which of the chakras that you um, that these cards are relating to. So I think overall a really wonderful structure to this deck. Um, I think it would be a great one for somebody like me who's not terribly familiar with um, chakras and their colors and energies. I'm definitely still working my way through all of that. So I think that is a wonderful um, kind of starting point. I'm not entirely sure of the, the artistic process that went into this deck, but um, I do think the artwork is quite lovely. It looks like we have some paintings, maybe some photographs, a little bit of a mixture of um, more of a, a mixed media look. It, at least that's what it seems like just on first glance through here. 
but I think they are quite lovely. They're very um, easy to read. One of the things that I do like is not only does it have the number so that you can put them back in order if you need to or very easily look through look them up in the guidebook we have the um, common name of the plant and an I am kind of statement and affirmation on each cards which I think means that you could use these cards in a lot of different ways so let's set those aside for a moment and let's take a look at the guidebook so of course, as I was going through the deck, I was reading bits and pieces through the guidebook. It is a full color guidebook, which is quite lovely. And it has a very detailed table of contents, which I really appreciate. So here we have a little bit of an introduction to the deck itself. I skipped a page, um, some acknowledgements. And then here we have a chakra diagram, which is really um, which is really wonderful because of course I'm familiar with the first seven and then we move into the upper chakras that are not quite as familiar to me. So I like having that reference in there. So here we have a little bit about using the deck itself and some card spreads and we have um, some larger card spreads here which I think are going to be really interesting. We have the soulful, soulful heart in inquiry spread and the soulful view of your purpose at this time. I kind of want to do that one. That one's calling my name. Then we go right into the information for each card. Sorry, I'm gonna try to bend this out a little bit more. One of the things I love is the way that this book is put together. The chakra colors and notations are on the side in color, which makes it really easy. If you look at the side, look at this. Maybe I need to go this way. There we go. It makes it really easy to find the section that you need to be in. So that, I think is just brilliant. Um, this is an excellent produced little guidebook. I think it's um, one of the best little like deck size guidebooks I've seen in a really long time. So for the archetypes, we have a full color um, little image of the card. You know, it's not the full card. It's just the, you know, the center here, as we can see. Let's pull the Earth Mother out. So just a little central figure of her, which is definitely enough to get the idea of which card you're working with. We have, of course, the title and number. We have um, the main keywords, and then we have some additional keywords underneath. We have a little bit about the archetype itself, the psycho-spiritual meaning, the shadow manifestation, healing with that particular archetype. And then there's also some additional notations as to which herbs might provide more support for that particular archetype. So I think that's really wonderful. Moving into the herbal allies, we have again the same color on the top. We have the name, the common plant name, the, what is that, the, the scientific, the genus name. I'm terrible at that kind of stuff. We have a full color picture again, which is fantastic. We have the keywords that I called out and we also have the affirmation that appears on the card itself. We have a little bit about the card, the psycho-spiritual meaning and healing with that particular herb. And it is the same for all of them, which is fantastic. So you can go through here and see that there is a quite a bit of information um, in this little guidebook. I think it's put together beautifully. I love the additions of the colors on the sides because it makes it so easy, especially since the cards are color coded. So I know if I pull a green card, I can turn to my book and go, here's the green section. I mean, provided I didn't want to use that fantastic um, table of contents in the beginning, but I could just flip to the green section too and look for the card that I'm looking for. So say I'm looking for fireweed. Not to mention I could just go here and say chakra, you know, six and fairy bell is on page 142. So I really, really appreciate a well-organized, well-designed little guidebook and one that actually fits in the box and is deck size is fantastic. So for the star cards, we have again, a same similar setup with the number, the name, the um, keyword. Then we have a little bit about viewing the card through the spiritual lens and some additional keywords as well, which is fantastic. 
list and we have a little bit about all the lovely people who created this particular deck. Fantastic little guidebook. I'm I'm super, super impressed by this guidebook. This deck, let's talk a little bit about the production quality of the deck. The colors are absolutely stunning. It's a nice thin and flexible. And when I say thin, please note that I do not mean like paper thin. I just mean it's nice and flexible and it I think it's going to shuffle really well. Provided, I mean, there's 80 plus cards. Can I get 80 plus cards in here? I'm not sure if you're actually supposed to shuffle and mix these cards together. Um, it might be beneficial to keep them in their sort of suits so that you could pull certain cards and work with certain chakra energies. But I just wanna see, I mean, there's just a lot of cards, so a little bit hard to shuffle. They are a little stiff because they are new. Side shuffle a little bit better. I think just because they're new, I think that they will eventually, um, we're gonna get a little bit of glare, so I apologize for that. Um, they are a little, a little on the glossy side, not glossy. I wouldn't even say glossy. They have a coating on them, um, that makes them a little bit on the shinier side, which makes them slip really well. So if you're a person who likes to overhand shuffle or work with jumpers, this is probably a fantastic deck because there are so many cards. It is quite large, but I, I don't like, I'm not. I'm not upset about the shuffling because it is a large deck and I will gladly, gladly change up my shuffling in order to have lots of wonderful cards in an Oracle deck. I love a big chunky Oracle deck and this one definitely is. So if I half it, I can actually riffle shuffle both of them. Let's just kind of see how they all look. Look at that, look at all those colors, how beautiful. I love that. I would see myself probably more keeping things a little bit more separate just so that I can um, really focus in on particular areas and really work on certain um, chakras. But I think even just using them all mixed together like this, let's just see if we pull a few cards what we get. So if we do like just three cards. We have the third chakra surrounding the fourth chakra and oh my chakra knowledge is so rusty so rusty i need to this just this just reminds me that i need to study more about it um i do really like that it's written kind of in what i would consider layman's terms so somebody like me who isn't terribly familiar with um chakra work uh, could actually use this deck. And I really, really appreciate that about it. So we have um, chakra three, the solar plexus here, and chakra four for the heart. So we have mountain pride, I stand up for what I believe in, and marshmallow, I release insecurity and embrace my authentic power. And in the heart space, we have, I choose to see the humor in my current situation. Me trying to pronounce botanical names and know my chakras right from the get-go based on their color is a little bit humorous because I'm really not that great with it. Now that we've had a little look at the cards, let's go ahead and take a look at Samantha's book as well. Make a little bit of space here because this is a nice, big, beautiful book. It is Opening the Senses of the Soul, Healing into Wholeness with Nature's Vibrational Medicine. This is a book that you can purchase separately, but she does have a bundle on her website so that you can purchase this book and the deck together. And again, a beautiful table of contents. So in this book, we have part one, Healing into Wholeness with When the Body Body talks, understanding vibrational medicine, healing into wholeness, choosing to heal, messages from the body, um, insights into our health challenges. That's an interesting one. I'm kind of curious about checking that one out. Um, so then we have opening the senses of your soul with balancing the chakras and healing archetypes with vibrational medicine. We have the different chakras here with individual information about them. And of course, an appendix, bibliography, and all the good stuff at the end. So here we have a little um, poem by Mary Oliver about the prologue. And so we go into part one with healing into wholeness. I'm really looking forward to reading this book. Um, working on whole body 
wellness and wholeness is definitely something that I am trying to focus on um, in this year. So this really came to me at just the right time because it's definitely work that I am interested in doing and that I'm really looking to tap into. I love the idea of blending it with the chakras and the vibrational um, medicine as well as the plant medicine. So I think that's going to be really interesting. Again, you can see this big, beautiful, full color book. So lots of information in this book. Um, I've kind of already flipped through it and this thing is packed full of information. Um, like I said, I haven't actually read it yet. I've only flipped through it, but you can see here, like we have a diagram for anatomy of body challenges, talking about where the different issues lie. And I think that's really wonderful. I'm definitely interested in reading that section. So here we have a whole section on, you know, each of the chakras, which is just fantastic. Let's just flip through one of them. So you can see we have the archetype again, the big, beautiful images from the deck skipped a page. So effects of stress on the body. We have the shaman archetype as mentioned in the book. So this really could also be used as, a, as an expanded guidebook, but there's so much more in here. Um, so we have medicinal uses for the different plants. And again, moving into the next chakra. So it has a little bit of information about the different chakras as well. So if you're like me and you're not super familiar with them, there is some basic information in here to kind of help you with that. So love these big, beautiful images. So yeah, it's just like this thing is really, really robust. I love it. I love a really great, robust book. So you can see beautifully produced, um, big, beautiful color images. The text is nice and large for people like me or maybe getting a little bit older and struggle with teeny tiny text. So wonderful little um, book here, not little, wonderful big book of um, some great information that I am really looking forward to working with. So that was a look at the opening the senses of the soul book. We took a look at the little guidebook for the senses of the soul oracle deck. And of course, our full flip through of the senses of the soul oracle deck. So I will leave a link to Samantha's website below so that you can go and check out more information about her work. I definitely want to thank Samantha for sending me these items for review. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to look through them and share them here with you but I'm really looking forward to actually using them myself too. So always a benefit when I get sent a deck that I'm like, yes, this is so in line with something that I am going to do or am already doing. So I do really appreciate that. If you have this deck or the book or any of these combinations thereof, I would love to know what you think of them. So please feel free to share with me in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. You'll find links for everything featured here in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life.